Hello and welcome to this quick episode which is an update on the previous one about the performance of the Mac Mini M4. So since that episode I have got much better performance out of the computer. I'd like to show you that and I'd also like to show you how you can um, tell if you are getting good GPU performance and I will also go into some, um, some settings with a text editor just to show you if you need or if you want to try and tweak your performance how that's done. Enjoy. Now I'd like to jump straight in and show where I went wrong last time. Now if you look at the bottom of my screen it's written here OpenCL with a yes and I presume that to mean that I was on full GPU acceleration. Um, now if you don't know how to get the information here then in the settings, now I'll go to the light tail because it's easier, and in the dark room, you have pattern for the image information line here. Um, sorry, I can actually put the highlight cursor on. It might come up. Uh, there it is. And I have um, OpenCL and the uh, variable is $OpenCL.activated. So that's what I have. Um, I have the file name, um, the information about the file here, sorry, the file name and OpenCL. And what happened is that I was actually not exporting with the full power of the GPU. I'm going to replay you just a short part, tiny part of the last episode. Um, so we have half the time here, which is um, consistent with the uh, Geekbench score being twice as fast. So this is on GPU. Um, and it does say CPU, and this is where I'm wondering why, um, uh, maybe there's something wrong in my settings, maybe. Something... So as you can see, we have on the export, um, we have written everywhere is CPU, 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 and especially on the diffuse modules. Now, some of them will be on the CPU and others on the GPU, but I couldn't see GPU anywhere. And I received a mail from um, Manuel in uh, Bavaria. So big thanks to, uh, to you, Manuel, who said you should be getting better performance uh, if the GPU is on. Um, so that's how I noticed. And this is what I recommend then you can do to, uh, to check all that. I've opened a terminal and this should work on Mac, Windows and Linux. Now the access to the application will be slightly different depending on what, on what platform you're on. On Mac, I'll go into Applications, Dark Table, I'm pressing on Tab each time for Autocomplete, Contents, Mac OS, Dark Table and I'll type in minus D, Open, CL. So that will start dark table and it will give me critical information. Now this is what I want to use. Make this a little bit larger. Now this is where I started it. So I have information there and what you need to find is OpenCL found one device and you have the device name here and the config key. Now the config key here is what we'll find when we try editing the text to try and get more information. What it does tell me is I have a global memory size of 36,000 uh, megabytes. I have 48 altogether, 48 gigs on the computer. It's found 36 and it's allocated 6.9 and I have a memory maximum image size of 16,000 times 16,000. So that is what I have for the moment. And if you don't have the device there, it means that the OpenCL is not working properly. And now I'll show you some export times with the same image. Right, quick dark table. I've come back to the terminal and now I'm going to enter dark table, launch dark table with two options, minus D OpenCL and minus D perfect for performance. So let's start that. Dark table is initializing here. And if I go up, it has initialized OpenCL and it should have found one device. So we are working on the GPU. Go back to this same image. Um, I can move this a little bit like that. Same image as last time. 
full size JPEG, 40 megapixels. Let's click on export. You've seen this before. Let's go and look at the results. And the difference this time is you can see here GPU, GPU, GPU. It's all blending on the GPU. Last time it was at 32 seconds for the whole processing of the image. And this time I'm at 11.9 seconds. So I'm nearly three times faster now from 11.9 seconds down from 32 and the previous on the previous computer which was an iMac 27 inch i9 with 40 gigs of ram so a big big machine it was 150 seconds so i am uh, do the math 12 13 14 times faster so i'm really pleased about that let's make this a little bit larger let's check how the uh, processing times are so previously i had one instance of dehaze going and what happened is that i measured uh, the uh, time the machine took to read raw when i changed exposure and i was at two seconds previously so let's just tweak the exposure there and see if that's changed anything we're at 1.2 seconds now so i've halved the time which means that everything is slicker and faster the gpu is working fine so i'm really pleased about that and another test i did is that when I had dehaze going diffuse and sharpen on with thin iterations, when I drew a mask, I found it a little bit laggy. Um, especially, let's do something very quick. Um, there we are. If I switch on the mask with an M, and if I increase, I used to, that was used to be so slow, and now it's actually fluid. It's still working a bit. But it is actually much more fluid. The results are out straight away. Like if I tweak the mask, I get some pretty quick results. So I don't really now have to go down to um, zero iterations, make the mask, and then go back up to 10. I mean, I'm fine. I'm sure if I went up to 20 or 30 iterations, I might have a slowdown. But that is so much faster. Um, okay, let's delve into some um, into some settings. So. The first thing you need to have is you can do this in uh, the dark table preferences in processing. You should have uh, OpenCL drivers. I have Apple. I really don't need other platforms. That's from a previous test. I now use all device memory because it doesn't freeze the computer like it did on the previous one. So why not? You, you, let's use all the device memory. And I've kept it on default because it doesn't really. Um, make any anything any faster if i use the two other options so those are the general ones but there are some hidden options that you can uh, tweak for opencl now if you want to refine the settings and understand um, or do some tests on your own graphics card you can also um, open a file called darktable rc now you'll find the information about this in the manual so you need to go in the user manual preferences and settings and processing. And in this page, you'll get the explanations of the different um, settings for OpenCL in the settings inside Darktable. But you'll also see here I have memory and performance tuning, which will explain all about how to um, check the performance. Um, it will give quite a little bit of information here. But what I want to go down to is this, which is called the CL device version. And you'll find this in a file. It is shown, uh, sorry, just before I miss that. It is shown, it was at the top, in a file called Darktable RC. Here we are, which is in home.config, Darktable, and Darktable RC. The .config is a hidden file. So we need to go in the finder or your um, explorer and i'm going to press on command shift dot to show the hidden files config dark table dark table rc and open this with your favorite text editor and here we have some text settings which are completely un incomprehensible um what we need to do there's so many of them um so i'm going to search for something called cl device cld and you'll find the um the settings for your graphics card now 
it's safe to do this. What you can do, I'll even show you, if you mess it up, you can actually uh, select the, all the lines which have CL device on. You can erase them. I'm going to save that file. I'm going to launch Darktable. So I had quit it. I'm launching it again with or without the options to check the performance. And if I go back into the file, the lines have appeared with the standard default um, settings that are back. So absolutely safe to mess around with. Now, if we go back to the documentation here on the CL devices, now this is further down in the page, we have a um, bucket full of numbers from A to K, each one fulfilling a different role. Most of them you can read and it says, leave them alone for any modern card manufactured or computer manufactured since 2015, you're safe to leave it. So A, B, C, I'm leaving those. D, E, they tell us to leave you at default value. The one I might try and change is F, the number of event handles, where it tells me explicitly that a conservative guess of 128 is by default, but we can go up to 1024 and be safe, and we could get a slightly better open CL performance. So I'll change that to 1024. And the asynchronous mode, which will also, if I set that to one, I should get some uh, increase of performance. And if I have errors like failing kernels, I can put it back to zero. For the last numbers, H will go to one to disable the device. So if you see that at one, it means that Darktable has decided that it's not working and you can set it manually back to zero to make it um, set up well to set up the the open seal with the GPU again. I, I we don't touch. J is for balancing open seal versus CPU tiling. There is a section about that. I'm not going to touch that. I think you need to adapt that if you have a lot of slowdown on your computer. And the shared memory fraction, which I'm interested in for my uh, Mac Mini, because I do have shared memory between the CPU and GPU. Uh, the 48 gigs can be used by both. Um, not so if I understand correctly with graphics cards like the NVIDIA's where you buy it with a fixed amount of memory, like four, six or eight gig or whatever. Um, on Apple computers, we can uh, decide that a fraction, it says 0 0.5. So a computer with 48 gigs would give me 24 gigs available to OpenCL. And that might also give me a speed boost. So let's try and change some values. Okay, so back to the dark table RC file. We'll put 1024 here, one for the asynchronous mode, and 0.5 for the 50% memory share. Now, I said that, you know, what went wrong is the GPU wasn't working last time. What I haven't said is how I got it working again, because the answer is I do not know. What could have happened um, is that while I was messing around, I erased these lines and it set it up again. Maybe I had um, something disabling it there. Maybe it's because I loaded a new version. I'm on the development versions of Darktable. I'm at the 4.9 somethings that I uh, download from pixel.us. The truth is, I don't know exactly how I got it working again. Um, but uh, it seems to be up and working. Um, I, there we are. So that's, that's one of the mysteries. Anyway, let's get on with it. Start dark table again in the terminal. Go down to exporting my file. Let's see if that's any quicker. Now, 4.8. This is the one I've been looking at. It was 4.5 last time. I think we're actually a little bit slower there. What are we at? 12.3 seconds. So that is actually a little bit slower. Um, okay, well, didn't work for me. I have very good performance. So I'm, I'm not really bothered. I just hope that it gives you the confidence to go into the settings if there's anything wrong or anything you would like to change to go into this file. What you can do is, before you change anything, is make a copy of it somewhere so if you do mess it up you can always um, 
go back and overwrite the uh, the messed up file with the original one. But uh, it's interesting having a look at this kind of thing. Um, it's certainly useful if you have a problem and you want to do some debugging. So there we are. I hope you've learned something. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll see you all soon. Sarah.